Hello and welcome to Health Matters on Channels Television. Thank you for staying with us. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. Maternal and newborn health are closely linked, so it's important for expectant mothers to take good care of themselves. Most pregnancies progress without incident, but about 8% of all pregnancies involve complications that may be harmful to both mother and baby if left unchecked. While some complications stem from health problems that existed before pregnancies, others occur unexpectedly and are unavoidable. One of these complications, preeclampsia, affects 10 million women around the world each year in developing countries. A woman is seven times as likely to develop preeclampsia as a, a, a woman in a developing nation is seven times as likely to develop uh, uh, preeclampsia as a woman in a developed nation, with incidences ranging from 4 to 18 percent of all deliveries. According to the Preeclampsia Foundation, in the studio with me is a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist with the Lagos University Teaching Hospital, Dr. Emmanuel Owe. You're welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Mary. Can you explain to us what is this preeclampsia? You know, patients say, don't mind all those doctors with their big names, but let's have it broken down so that we can understand. Okay, thank you for the question. Now, uh, preeclampsia um, is a condition that affects a pregnant woman. Okay, so meaning if you're not pregnant, you can have preeclampsia, and is a condition that is characterized by elevated blood pressure. We call high blood pressure in pregnancy, and the blood pressure we're talking about is the systolic that is 140 and above, and the systolic that is 90 and above. Any blood pressure in that, that range, uh, second half of the pregnancy, okay, that is from 20 weeks. Okay. So... Uh, which every woman knows as every woman knows as uh, five months, but in in our in our parlance is weeks, twenty weeks from there and above. If a woman has that blood pressure and the urine, when they do their urine test and it shows that there's protein in it, usually we consider two plus protein. Okay, so when that happens, yes, when that happens, the woman has preeclampsia. So what if the woman had high blood pressure before she got pregnant? Does it mean she's, she already has preeclampsia once she's pregnant? Okay. It doesn't mean that. A woman has high blood pressure before pregnancy, a pregnancy we consider a chronic hypertension in pregnancy. Okay. Now, that can be actually be managed till she gives birth and nothing happens. Okay? However, preeclampsia can be superimposed in that, meaning she has just normal blood pressure. I mean, so they are different. Yes. The high blood pressure and the preeclampsia are two different things. Yeah, two different things in the way that in, maybe in terms of severity, but okay. it's like a continuum, all right? Before you get preeclampsia, you have to have high blood pressure. So preeclampsia combines two. Why high blood pressure is just single? Because a woman can actually have high blood pressure in pregnancy all through without preeclampsia. Okay. Is it the protein that is the defining fe uh, feature in all of this? Yes. It's the protein that is added to the elevated blood pressure that makes it preeclampsia. Why does it happen? <laughs> ah, well, um, I mean, this is what everybody will keep saying. It's just like, you see, why does fever happen? Why does hypertension happen? Just like that. The cause is really not known. However, what we, what we found out that there are risk factors, okay? okay? The risk factors, and like I said before, once you're not, a woman is not pregnant, you can't have preeclampsia. You can have, I mean, elevated blood pressure. So, Preeclampsia is tied to pregnancy. Now, why does it happen? There are some um, explanations that have been put, theories that you know a lot of people have, you know, they done research in the past and theories were put forward that this, that, that. But right now, nobody can actually say this is exactly what causes it. Okay, but the commonest one is something that has to do with the vessel between the woman's womb and the baby. Okay, okay. now again. You cannot really explain or you cannot really say you go there and utter that whatever is happening. It just happens. So it's one of those unavoidable things that doesn't happen to every woman. It doesn't happen to everyone. Just that some people have risk factors for it. Okay. So what are these risk factors? Risk factors. To start with, a, a lady that gets pregnant when she's maybe less than 20 in the early ages, okay, in the teen, late teens, you know, when they get pregnant, they are risk. Or even early teens. Yes. <laughs> no, I didn't mean early teens now. I mean late teens. Late teens, okay. But of course, once you're less than 20, okay. without 13, you're at risk. 
Okay. So just to say teenage pregnancy, you can use the word teenage pregnancy, okay? Then a woman that is getting pregnant the first time, maybe late 30s to 40s. That's a lot of women yes, these days. Yes, two, two spectra, you know, two, you know, eight. Really groups, early and then and later late, on. Okay? Then a woman that has had maybe um, preeclampsia before or elevated blood pressure before in pregnancy, she's at risk. A woman that has a family member has elevated blood pressure or preeclampsia is also at risk. Okay? okay, so it can be hereditary. Yes, hereditary in the way that we don't use the word hereditary, but we call it familial, okay. meaning something just there's relationship. If a lady that is, that is just pregnant or about to get pregnant has a sister that's had it, she's at risk. It doesn't mean she will have it. Okay. So those are some, because when you have this information, you know what to do, how to counsel them. A woman that is getting pregnant, of course, the first pregnancy is most of the time at risk. It doesn't mean it can't recall. Then again, a woman that is big, obese, getting pregnant. These are some of the risk factors that we found that when somebody has it as an obstetrician, you have to pre prepare their mind and find ways of reducing the risk in terms of prevention because there are some areas you can actually reduce the chance of happening even though it's not 100%. Yes. So does that happen? That a woman might come and say, um, doctor, my husband and I have been married for this number of months or whatever, and we're thinking of having a family. Okay. And then you go through her history and find some of these risk factors. Do you actually tell the woman that, okay, you're at risk for certain things? Is it one of the things that is done? You see, that is the idea that should be done. In fact, that's what we talk about. We talk about pre, pre, preconception counseling, okay? Ideally, in the, in the developed world, such, such opportunities are given to women of childbearing age who are considering getting pregnant. So they come for such classes and they are put through to understand the risks they are, they are, I mean, the risks they, they are facing or what could happen in the pregnancy. So ideally, that's the right time to say that. You prepare their mind because patients that have such risk, you want to see them more frequently in antenatal. You want to let them know the importance of coming to antenatal because I've seen a lot of pregnant women, they will say, doctor, they just, they just downplay antenatal. People give birth every day. Exactly. It's a normal thing. <laughs> So they downplay antenatal. Some of them don't register on time. So such classes offer you the opportunity to inform them, prepare their mind. When you get pregnant, register early, and they need to comply with the antenatal visits. You know, so this is how you can nip this in the board. Okay, so let me just let's just get this straight. Should we scratch the idea of first antenatal visit should be at three months? Because growing up, that's what I always heard. You want to go for antenatals, it's too early. Wait till it's three months. And that's what everybody was telling, you know, their children, their friends. Should we, uh, should we abolish, should we scratch that? Okay, well, we shouldn't. <laughs> now, we shouldn't. You see, the, you know, the funny thing about preeclampsia, if you remember how we mentioned it, we did mention that it starts second half of pregnancy. Okay. Which we are talking about 20 weeks. That's number one. Number two, the drug, the particular drug we can give to even prevent we call it aspirin, okay, baby aspirin. We give to prevent women that are at risk of it. Okay. Now, not to say 100% of the women that take it will not have, but mm -hmm. studies have shown that it helps to reduce. So these are started from th the so-called uh, three months. Okay. Three months, four months. You can start it and it's be effective. So, meaning that even a woman registers at that three months, it's not too late. However, what we need to do is, a woman that we've seen, maybe had it in a pregnancy, she needs to come in again for the next one. We don't want her to wait that long. Till that long. So that's what we counsel them. The reason why we don't want people to register so early is that sometimes people register at six weeks. There's really nothing you're doing. In fact, you can't even start drug until you do a scan to be sure that they're pregnant. But there are a few occasions we ask women to register early. Either they are at risk of uh, to be pregnant or another problem. So three months is really not too late. However, if a woman has had... Uh, a woman has not had the preconception counseling because some people have blood pressure, elevated blood pressure, ab initial. Okay. So those people actually need to register before three months because you need to start taking care of that, pre of that uh, high blood pressure before it gets too bad because for them, the pre cancer can start very early. So that's where it comes in. All right. Does this uh, condition have symptoms? Yes, actually it does. However, again, just like everybody say, in, in elevated blood pressure, high blood pressure does not cause symptoms very early. It's very bad. 
So that's a problem. If you are waiting for symptoms, it may be too late. It does have symptoms, hmm. but it's, not, it's something that you see later, very late. Now, symptoms involve um, headache. And, and this one we're talking about really severe preeclampsia because my, pre, my preeclampsia may not even cause symptoms. But the common one, the headache, a woman will notice that she's having some, maybe some flashes of light, a vision, visual disturbance. Others, they vomit. Mm. Some, they will just they be restless. Okay, so these are some of the common symptoms. Then some, the complaint of pain just below their chest, the center part of their upper abdomen. They have some pain. Those are, but what time they're having this is really severe. Some of them, they may not have 24 hours before they have seizures. Okay? That bad. Yeah, so... Waiting for symptoms is really not it. In fact, it, once a woman has symptoms, it's really late, I should say. So, but these are the symptoms. Okay. Um, you said that it can be discovered at 20 weeks. That's when it starts, actually. Okay, that's when it starts. That's, that's when you can say this woman has preeclampsia. That's what I'm really saying. It's not that it can be discovered. At 20 weeks is when it should start. Or from 20 weeks when you see such as preeclampsia. If you see this picture I painted, elevated blood pressure protein before 20 weeks, it's probably not preeclampsia. It's probably the person has chronic problem, kidney problem or high blood pressure. But it's from 20 weeks you can say this woman has preeclampsia. So it starts 30 weeks. So it does not have to be 20 weeks, okay? But it's from there you can say this is preeclampsia. That's really what I'm saying. But you have a level of protein below which you, don't, you feel there's no danger, right? Okay, yes, yes, but that's just one plus. Because when you check protein in women, it starts with what they call trace. A trace is neither here nor there. It's not significant. The next week, maybe nothing, okay? But when you really say a woman has proteinuria, you have one plus. In, when they do urine tests, one plus. One plus is really does not really define preeclampsia, except some other tests are done to put it under there. But a woman should not have protein in urine, ideally, in pregnancy. So once we see one, we don't, just, we don't just downplay it. We don't overlook it. We want to search further. Is this a result of infection? We ask them to do tests to be sure it's not just um, preeclampsia that is starting. Is it an infection? We check. So if a woman keeps having consistent like that, we also have to consider, consider the blood pressure. Really, would the woman just have protein and blood pressure is fine? You say she has preeclampsia. No. Okay. Elevated blood pressure will be there. But like I said before, a woman can have elevated blood pressure all through without protein in the urine. That's just gestational hypertension. That is pregnancy-induced hypertension. That's not preeclampsia. Okay. When protein now starts, we use 2 plus as significant protein. A few occasions, one can be used. But what we want, no protein. When the woman has protein, it does not make her to say she has preeclampsia, but it makes us to start getting weary and, you know, very, I mean, very watchful. So what's happening? So that's how it is. There's this other term I hear, you know, and it can be a bit confusing. Okay. There's preeclampsia, there's eclampsia. What's the difference? Okay. Um, it's a continuum. Like I mentioned before, you can see preeclampsia. Pre means before. Before eclampsia. Now, so eclampsia e is the culprit. <laughs> <laughs> that is the deadliest, okay? So eclampsia is the tail end of it, so to speak. It's the severest. I mean, it's the most severe, I should say. It means a woman that has preeclampsia, I mentioned what they have. Now, when seizures not occur, convulsion not adds to it, that's eclampsia. That so is, a pregnant woman actually starts convulsing. Yes, that's, that's one that is most deadly because some people die from the process, okay? Others, they have brain, them, brain injury, bleeding to the brain. So that's eclampsia. So that's what we are actually preventing because if preeclampsia is not well managed, it's going to get to that more often than not. So that is it. Eclampsia is the one that has, when you now have seizure, you know, on po imposed on the preeclampsia we were just talking about, high elevated blood pressure and protein in the urine. So it should actually be quite shocking that some women don't feel the need to have antenatal checks. So that's why this kind of program, we, we commend you people for bringing them up, bringing it up, because they need to know, actually, that really there's no way you know you have preeclampsia if you're just at home. Like we said, it does not have symptoms early stage. So sometimes... By the time you are having symptoms, you, the woman is, is, is almost gone. So, coming for antenatal, they are, it's picked very, very early, okay? And, what, like I always boast of, our patient where we were, patients that have come for antenatal, those that follow what we say, none of them come with this. In fact, 
preeclampsia is starting, we nip it in the ball before it gets so bad, okay? Because delivering is the definitive treatment. We watch them. Our patients don't have eclampsia. They don't. We won't get there, except the default. But those that follow our management, they don't have So once eclampsia. they come for management, they are fine. Yes. On that note, let's take a, uh, a short break. We'll take a short break and come back very soon. Please stay with us. Welcome back. Call 0808-054-2233 if you have questions to ask about preeclampsia. That's 0808-054-2233. You can also tweet at CTV underscore Mary A. And someone has already tweeted at Charles Orenzo is asking, if there's low blood pressure in pregnancy, does that qualify as preeclampsia? Okay, no, because we, we just said that when we're talking about preeclampsia, we're talking about elevated blood pressure. So that would be opposite. It. So low blood pressure has nothing to do with preeclampsia, actually. All right. Now, you mentioned before we went on break that um, the definitive treatment is delivery. What if the preeclampsia is at 20 weeks? 20 weeks, you say, is about five months, right? Yes. You deliver a five month old baby? Okay. <laughs> Well, that's a good question, actually. It's important that we address it. Now, you see, um, it, it all depends on the stage we are catching the preeclampsia. I did mention that there is what we call mild preeclampsia, what we call severe preeclampsia. The mild one, you can buy time. Of course, you bring the patient in, buy time, and see how much weeks you can gain more in the pregnancy. Severe one is the one that's a bit dicey because... If, you, if it's not well managed, organs start getting damaged. Organs Aha, of the woman. That's what number organs one. Organs are these. Yes. I mean, a lot. Right from the, the eyes, you know, the eyes can be affected, the brain, of course. Stroke. Let me just uh, hold you on there because if Elua is, is on the line now. Hello? If Elua, are you there? I think we lost her or him. Go on. You said eyes. Yes, the eyes can be affected. If you remember, I did say that they start having some flashes of light. Okay? Yes. Preeclampsia has, you know, an effect on that. can affect the brain, of course. Stroke, the liver, the lungs, the kidneys. So it's multiple organs. Has it already started affecting the kidney? And that's why you see protein in the urine? In a way, yes. In a way, we can say that. The good thing is that is reversible. Okay, okay that's reversible. But that's the one that is, is, is more dangerous, what we call acute kidney injury, whereby the urine will stop making adequate urine. I mean, the kidneys will stop making adequate urine. And if it's that bad, the patient will have to undergo what we call dialysis to restore the All kidney back. All because of preeclampsia. Exactly. So it can get so bad. Now, to answer your question directly, um, when we find a woman that is pregnant, irrespective of the gestational age mm -hmm. of the pregnancy, we have to weigh the life of the mother and the baby, we have to consider which one will be more important at this stage. Because if the pregnancy is very far from the chance, a time where the, the baby is, has a chance of survival if it's, if it's brought out, the baby is brought out, if the pregnancy is very far from there and the woman's condition is severe, there will be, you'll be left with no option that to either terminate the pregnancy in order to save her life. Okay. That does happen sometimes. Exactly, yes. Tell me, does this happen in developed countries where they have to ask themselves, do we keep? Yes. Do we take out the baby so that the mother can leave? Yeah. Even now in the 21st century? It does happen because preeclampsia has nothing to do with whether you're black or white. Just that it's more co it could be more common here. But it does happen. And you need the woman to be alive to get pregnant again. So in the bid to try and salvage the pregnancy, you may compromise the woman's health. So... It comes to that, of course, with counseling, you don't just tell the woman, I believe most women will say, okay, doctor, I need my life back. Let's go ahead with this. But you need to let them know. But that's a definitive treatment. When the baby the pregnancy is discontinued, this condition reverses, resolves, actually. Okay, so definitive treatment is delivering of the baby, whether nine months before, you know. However, efforts, all efforts are always made to prolong the pregnancy. Also keeping you know, in mind that you don't want to affect the mother negatively. So we wait. But you bring Bayo is in. calling from Australia. Hello, Bayo. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Please ask your question. Yeah, um, my question is uh, regarding the topic uh, of discussion. 
Go ahead. Yeah, um, actually, yeah, actually, my my wife uh, had a pregnancy for our second baby. Okay. So, from what uh, the doctor is saying, can you speak up that, a bit? Uh, it could be. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah. So, from what the doctor is saying, this is our second baby, and from the f our first baby, there was no issue. The Everything went well, but the second one, she had a preeclampsia. So I was just wondering how possible is that when the first pregnancy went well and the second one is a preeclampsia? Okay, thank you very much, Bayo. So are there any odds that, you know, in a woman developing preeclampsia, second pregnancy, not the first? What's happening? Yes, I mean... Um like what we know in, in science, is never all or none, okay? Um, risk factors, we've already alighted. Not to say there can be some variations, okay? okay. That's number one. And again, he just said that, but I, I did enumerate uh, other risk factors. Except we see this woman and ask questions, you'll be shocked that there could be one or two other risk factors ever may not be here because it's not the first pregnancy. Because there could still be other risk factors. But notwithstanding, if the first one did not have preeclampsia, it does not mean the second one cannot occur. Okay. We just found that it's more common in the first pregnancy. I've had patients that managed who did not have the first time they had. Okay. So it can still happen, not to say it cannot, okay, as long as the patient is pregnant. So it's a chance thing. Yes, but just that there are risk factors. Okay, we, that we, means that, yes. I need to get this out. Mm. That means that a woman cannot say, oh, I didn't have it in the first one, so I can't have it in the second yes. one. Yes. Yeah. Let's quickly take yes. this call from Odoayo. Hello? Hello. Hello, what's your question? My question is that, what, what is the causes um, of preeclampsia? Okay, we'll allow that. Maybe some people tuned in late. Can you tell us the cause? <laughs> yes. As I said before, there's no known cause, okay? However, what we know are just risk factors. So, no, no, no. I cannot tell you that this is what causes your preeclampsia. It's just risk factors. And the funny thing, the most of the risk factors, you, you can't even control. Because if your sibling had preeclampsia, <laughs> there's nothing you can do about that. If you are getting pregnant for the first time, <laughs> there's nothing you can do about that. However... You can do your best to get pregnant when you're in your 20s, not too uh -huh. early. They're not waiting for when you're in your 40s, okay? Not too late. You could do that. Then, of course, uh, you could work on your weight. Like we said, people that are overweight. I mean, I've seen slim people that have it, so I'm not saying slim people don't have it, but it's a rich factor, so you could also work on that. Basically, those are some of the risk factors that you can modify, but others you can't. And again, if a woman has elevated blood pressure before getting pregnant, it should be well controlled. Then the best is ensure that you come for antenatal care regularly because if it's picked early, we can manage. I have seen people that did not come, the thing just, it just develops so fast and, you know, just dead with them. I would just use that word. So that's what we can see. There's no particular cause, right? So if a woman, um, if a baby survives the condition, but maybe it was really bad mm. and it, it got to the baby. What kind of things should we see on the baby? Okay. Yeah. Okay. If the baby survived the, if the, yes. baby survives the condition okay. that the mother had. Yeah. Well, the commonest one, especially if it's been ongoing, first of all, the baby will be small for the age. Okay. okay. The baby will be small for the age if the lay was for long. That's common. Then, because most of the time, they come out earlier than they should, the battle with respiratory problems, okay? Then, of course, the neonatologists, if they're able to salvage that, the baby will just develop like, you know, normal baby. It doesn't mean like there's a long-term defect that you're not going to see. Okay. You know, basically... You try to about, overcome those yes, problems. Yes, it's just about blood getting to the baby more often than not. That's the problem the baby usually has. That usually makes the baby die because the hypertension of the vessel it reduces the blood flow. So the baby is not getting no, The baby will start deteriorating. It's okay. not like there's one damage that the baby will just have like that, no. The damage that really will occur is as a result of the baby not being matured when the baby came out. 
So that's what we call it. Okay, with. thank you very much for coming to the show. That's, uh, it's been very wonderful having you. But just before we go, they say the blood pressure comes down when the baby comes out. Always? Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, that's what we expect. We've seen a few people go ahead and have elevated blood pressure later in life, but that one should come down. It may be difficult, but usually it will come down. If it was caused by just that pregnancy, it should come it should down. Come down. Thank yeah. you so much for coming to the show. Thank you for being with us and calling in. Ifelua, sorry, you didn't get through. Bio from Australia, thank you so much. And Oduayo, the rest of you, have a wonderful day. I am Mary Alaleusu.